Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about f-stop and aperture. As a photographer, initially I didn't really fully understand what an f-stop did. In my mind, I was going to use a lower f-stop to let in more light and a higher f-stop to let in less light. But there's more that the f-stop affects than just light coming into the sensor. So let's take a look at a actual lens and see what the f-stop does. So what I have here is my old Nikon 50 millimeter lens and it has the f-stop ring out here on the outside. So on modern cameras we control the f-stop usually on the camera and there's an electronic interface that changes it. But on the old cameras it was manual. And so I'm going to use this because you can actually see, so let's do that again. So I'm at f1.4 and as I close the f-stops down. You can see the blades in the lens closing down to where I just have a little bit, a little hole down there that's letting light in to the lens at, uh, what is this, at f16. Right, so and as I open it back up, that hole that lets the light in gets larger, larger, until it's completely open inside of the lens. So that is mechanically how the f-stop works on a camera. So let's look at the practical side of your f-stop. So this is an image that I took of some chess pieces. It's shot at f3.2 and the focus point was this pawn that sits right here in the middle of the board. And as you can see really that pawn is the only thing that's in focus in this shot. Every, all the other pieces are out of focus. Now as I go down the list, I've shot another image, and this is at f9. And as you can see, we got a little bit more focus around the pond. The pond's still the center of focus, but now these pieces near the pond are coming into focus. And as we drop the f-stop even farther down to f18, well now the pond here is in focus, and the pond next to it's in focus the queen and the king, the king's in focus, but these pieces down here on the edge are still out of focus. Whoops. That's with the f-stop at f18. Now if I open the f-stop up even farther, now to f32, now you can see a lot of the pieces are coming into focus. Even down here on the end, this one's over here, it's becoming a, a little, it's not quite in focus, but it's much better than it was. The uh, the bishop behind the pawn's in focus, the queen's in focus, all these things are in focus now. Yeah, even down here, the, the, the rook at the end of the board, or the uh, castle at the end of the board is, is in focus. As we open the f-stop, our focus depth becomes greater, or I say as we close the f-stop, as we make the f-stop higher, f32, our focus depth becomes greater than where we started down here at f3.2, where just a little bit was in focus. Now, this has a practical application if you're shooting like portrait photography and you only want your subject in focus and you want the background and foreground objects to be slightly blurred called, you know, the effect is called bokeh. You would use a lower f-stop number to do that with. Now if I was out doing landscape photography and I want everything in focus, I want to open up or I want to basically use a higher f-stop. I have a greater depth of focus so I can get as much of my picture in focus as possible. Now as a side note, I just wanted to point out this f32 range, as we zoom in on these objects, you can see this like star effect that's occurring on the, or the lights reflecting off of the pieces. This is particular, a particular phenomenon that's, that occurs whenever you use higher f-stop numbers. If we look at the image back down here at, and, and it's probably a bad example, but we don't really see that on this image as much. But as we go up into the f-stop levels, it begins to appear here, as you can see. 
and then it becomes even greater here as we make the f-stop at f-18. So that's an effect of using high f-stop numbers is we do get this little starring effect. So if that's what you're after, you're going to use a higher f-stop number or you can use a star filter. Let's look at a, a landscape picture here. This one here, we have a landscape picture that I've taken. The building is sharp. The flowers in the mid-ground are sharp, but the flowers in the foreground are out of focus. And let's take a look at one other image that I have here. Uh, this was a flower. I was doing a macro photography uh, of, and you can see here the petals in the foreground are in focus, but the rest of the flower is out of focus. And here I've got a little bit more of the petals in focus, and then if I look here, my center is in focus, but I still I can't get everything in focus. And in this case, I'm shooting at f20. So a way to overcome that is to use focus stacking. So, and I want to point out too, if you look here, the closer the object is you're focusing to, the narrower of your depth of focus will become. So whenever I'm shooting macro photography, my depth of focus becomes a lot narrower for the f-stop, then the same f-stop would be if, as if I was focusing in a landscape. So, and this was a different lens, but this is an f-18 and I've got a focus depth that's measured in tens of feet versus the one that I'm shooting back here with the flower that's really measured in millimeters. So, you need to keep that in mind too. So if macro photography, your, your focus field is going to be a lot narrower than it is with landscape photography. So as we're talking about this depth of focus, keep that in mind. Um, so how do we overcome this whenever we are, whenever we have a situation where our depth of focus just doesn't cover the entire picture like this landscape that we want it to? Well, and I made another video on this, right? But we're going to use a thing called focus stacking. And if we do focus stacking, we can basically, as you can see, get the entire picture in focus if we need to. And so this is basically a focus stacked image of that flower that I was showing you earlier that's really got about, I think this was had five images, six images that I basically stacked inside a Lightroom. So, and if you're interested in that, check out that other video. But that is how your f-stop works. So it's more than just changing the light that's coming in on the sensor. Sensor, It is actually changing your depth of focus. And like we were talking back here, if you crank up that, that f-stop, you're going to start getting these little twinkly things too. And so if that's what you're after, the effect you're after, then you want to use higher f-stops. So whenever you're going out and you get your new camera and you're and you're playing with it. So for me, I tend to always have my camera on, on using, it's set for f-stop priority. That way I can set the f-stop in my ISO and my shutter speed will actually change depending on the situation that I'm shooting. Um, keep in mind, there are different types of f-stops that you're, you're looking for to have different effects. So generally speaking, if you're doing a portrait of an individual, you want a lower f-stop number so you have that bokeh effect. So the things around that individual are, are out of focus like in the, the first picture here. We just want every, all the attention to be on the subject. Now, if we're out doing landscape photography, we tend to use higher f-stop values because we're going to set up on a tripod so we don't really need a fast shutter speed. If there's nothing moving around us, then we don't care if the shutter takes a, you know, the shutter is, is a, at a long speed. If it takes a second, it's great. It's on a tripod. Nothing's moving. As long as the wind's not blowing, then we're good to go. And then there's other situations. So if we're shooting sports or we're shooting wildlife like birds, well, we want to have a high shutter, val shutter value, right? We want to have that shutter go as fast as it can. But we tend to like to have a little higher f-stop value so we have a good depth of focus so that we can compensate for when these objects are moving or the subject's moving. But we try to keep that f-stop down as low as possible 
to allow as much light in the sensor. So then we end up in a situation where we're compromising and we're probably using a higher ISO value to make up for the, the, to increase the shutter speed, but also allow for a little bit higher f-stop number so that we can, we've got a little fudge space whenever we're doing the focus. So anyway, that is how an f-stop works in a nutshell. I, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, if you could, please click like and subscribe down below. That would help me out a lot. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.